Hello and welcome to today's episode which is setting up KDE stuff, namely Dolphin, Console, Kit and Kmail, but we talk about other things as well, to work with web hosting, specifically Ultrahost web hosting. Now quite obviously this episode is sponsored by Ultrahost, which I think is a very nice thing because they are actually helping me contribute to KDE via this video. So let's actually talk how to integrate their services into KDE Plasma. Starting off with the obvious, what if I have web hosting at Ultrahost and I do actually want to see my files in Dolphin when I open up Dolphin and that can be done in a couple of ways. We're going to talk about FTP mainly. What you do after actually, you know, subscribe subscribing to Ultrahost is that you have a page for your uh, service and then you're able to log in into a cPanel that has tons of options and one of these options if you search really hard is FTP accounts. In that page you have a new UI to create users who will access via FTP your files and you can actually specify like how much data each user should be able to add to the web hosting and also which directory which directory should be available to each user. So I just created an example one that is able to access everything and has unlimited storage. And when I do that, I actually get the info that is required for Dolphin to do its magic. So I open up Dolphin and I go into the network section and I add a new network folder. It's gonna ask me what kind of network folder I want. There's FTP, there's also SSH and we'll get to that. But first, click on FTP, you get a dialogue with all the info that you should fill out. And that is literally copy pasting from the FTP page and in general, the cPanel page. That was actually really easy, which is super important because I kid you not, about this kind of web hosting stuff, I'm so dumb. So. It was super nice that there's actually a new UI to just copy paste stuff. And that actually worked out of the box right away. You do get all of your files and you can just, as an example, right click, create a new file and it's gonna automatically update on the web hosting obviously. And you can also see that, you know, it actually worked from the cPanel page. You do have a page that shows all of your files and you can interact with them directly from the web browser if you want to. But I mean, it's there's Dolphin. Dolphin is cooler. SSH, you can also go with SSH. In this case, I didn't actually use the FTP account, but I used the general account that manages everything. And again, same info to copy paste, it just works out of the box. And in this case, I actually get access to everything and not just the home directory, which is pretty useful. So I set up both and if you do want to access this very often, you can just drag and drop the folder into the bookmarks on the left and that's gonna bookmark it. So that was actually easy, which is important because I'm dumb. Talking about SSH now, it's super likely that you know how SSH works better than me. Again, I'm dumb. But luckily enough for me, there's a console tool that makes SSH easier. So what I did firstly is to go into again the cPanel. There's a section regarding SSH, which has the ability to manage case. So I generated a public private K pair and I downloaded the private key and I also changed its permissions. Otherwise this whole thing won't work. At this point you do open console and here's what you do. You go to the plugin section and you enable SSH settings. You will get a panel on the left and in that panel you will be able to create new settings for the SSH stuff, which is super nice because yes, uh, at the end it's just a command line that you're supposed to write, but I'm dumb. So actually having a UI where you just copy paste the information that you have to is beautiful. So again, you have cPanel of Ultas from one side, you have console with the SSH stuff on the other side and you just copy paste the info. You will have this entry and then you just double click it and you get the, you know, you just log in via SSH. I, I wish I knew this before, would have made my life easier, but now you know. There's also another plugin in console that you can activate just, just under the SSH one, but I'll leave you to actually discover what it does. Pretty neat. Let's switch to Kate. So if you're doing any development or that sort of stuff, which I do, you're 
probably going to need Git. So another very nice feature that I found in Cipano, I, I was literally clicking random buttons to discover cool stuff. And one feature is that you're actually able to clone repositories from the web interface directly. So you just open the Git stuff, you copy paste the link of the remote GitHub repository, or you can just create a new one from scratch and you know, you select the folder to copy it to, and that was it, literally. And that's actually important because, okay, yes, you could do that via SSH and console, but again, I'm, I'm dumb, it's nice to just click a button. And the cool stuff is that Kate actually has very strong Git support inside of it, which means that now you can control the files that you have in your Ultahost web hosting via Kate Git UI, which is super nice. So how does this work? You open up Kate and on the left, you get a Git button. You just click on Git and then you're able to see what branch you're in. You're able to commit, pull and push, obviously, but you also get some nice features such as you can compare branches. When you do that, you just select the other branch, branches, you can compare branches. You select the other branch and then you're able to see all the files that are changed. And for each file, you get the diff, so with all the plus and minuses. And I'm using an outdated version of Kate, but in the latest one, it's even prettier. You get all the green and red UI. So th that, nice, nice. Next one is setting up an email. And again, from Ulthost, it's incredibly simple actually. From the service web page itself, you get a button that literally says create a new email quickly. And you just have to insert what the email address would be and the password. Click a button, that's it, which is super important because I'm dumb. Then on the left, instead of going to cPanel as before, you go into webmail and you just log in with the credential that you just created and that's it, it works. Now, however, we do need to connect it to Kmail because obviously we're going to use Kmail. You could use Roundcube, which is the web email open source thingy that Ultaust directly offers. So you, you don't have to use Kmail, but I mean, it's KDE stuff, so we have to. And it's actually pretty easy. From Ultaust website, you just say automatically configure my device, which is not gonna work obviously with Linux and Kmail, but by doing that, you actually get all the manual setting up information that we need. You've got pop POP3, you've got IMAP stuff. Again, you know these things better than I do actually, but I just know enough that I can just copy paste this information when in Kmail, you just click create a new account and then you just you know copy paste the info. I'm such a professional. Okay, so these are the things that I, want, I wanted to talk about. There is a couple of things that I did notice whilst recording the video. And the first one, which is super nice, is that you have a series of plugins that you can just install with one click. So I thought, what if we could create a Mastodon instance with just one click? And I went through the list and unluckily, no, there's no Mastodon. However, firstly, somebody could, you know, add it. It looks like it's a store where you can add things. And you do have GNU Social, which should be part of the Fediverse, if I'm not incorrect. So I tried to do my own GNU Social instance just with one click and surprisingly enough, it worked. <laughs> like I just have to click install and, and that was it. If I had to do it manually, years would have, <laughs> it would have taken years. So that was pretty nice as well. And it immediately told me that what the address was and that I could like copy paste the new address to share on Twitter. It li literally said, you know, copy paste this so you can share it on your social networks. Fair enough. And I do think that it would be very cool to see like more social networks, open source social networks appear on the list. I also found a dating app. If you want to self host your own dating app, there's an option to do that. Why wouldn't I do that? Why? <laughs> Why wouldn't I use my own dating app? Okay, so anyway, another thing whilst I was recording the video, I actually had an issue because whilst setting up the accounts, I messed up passwords and I couldn't log into some of the accounts I created anymore because I'm 
dump. So what I did was to try to contact support of old house to actually see if it was any good. You know, that, that's the kind of things you want to know before you talk about the service. And there is a chat thingy that you can immediately immediately send a message to. Uh, since it was a technical question, they referred me to a ticket page, which is a page where you can create tickets. And so I made one. and they immediately answered with the correct password, which was super nice. And, you know, it literally took them one minute, which means that they have good support. And also my question was particularly stupid, I guess. So to end this video, uh, I actually paid for the service. Like, yeah, I know I'm sponsoring it, but I, I actually paid for it to see how it worked. And it's uh, 3.06 euros a month if you pay monthly it gets cheaper if you pay like yearly and such it's uh, 2 and 86 euros if you pay yearly and 2.6 if you pay uh, three years in advance and if you pay from a year uh, and on you also get it also says free domain which i guess uh, means you get a free domain which is nice but to be fair I, I didn't try that button so I'm gonna trust it. In the starter you do get like one domain 30 gigabytes on, of SSD you get 10k roughly visit monthly and then it's like unmetered bandwidth free backups a free SS, SSL certificate. I had no clue if this was any good so I went around and tried to compare it to other services. I checked out Hostinger I was like is it any good and the base plan of Hostinger does not give you daily backup daily backups, you don't get multiple email accounts, and you also don't get unlimited bandwidth. And it's 50 cents more expensive. A deal breaker. <laughs> There's also Contable, which uh, looks a few cents cheaper, but you actually have to add VAT, like VAT to it, and then it's like 75 cents more expensive. So it looks like what Ulthost is offering with its base model is actually super cheap compared to pretty much everything else. I couldn't find cheaper stuff. So I think that if you're somebody that's starting out and learning these things like me, because I can't just understand them at the first go, this is actually extremely appealing. Drinking game, one shot for every time I said I'm dumb. <laughs>